Hello and welcome to All Saints Online. Um, this week we have Kate Dickinson leading our worship, um, who led our worship about a month ago. Um, she is a local preacher. She's the local preacher secretary for the circuit and she's from Trinity Methodist URC in Nebworth. So over to you, Kate. Thank you, Chris. We begin with our call to worship. Come to the God who knows us, to the God who created our being, to the God who knows our frailty, to the God who loves and cherishes us beyond measure. Come as you are and worship God. Our first song this morning is All That I Am by Rend Collective. One, two. on the altar now No holding back, no holding out In view of your matchless sacrifice Take every treasure, take this life All oh, that I am for all that you are Let us bring to God our prayers of thanks. God of love and grace beyond our telling, we bring our thankful hearts to you, acknowledging that without you, we are nothing. And with you, 
we can be so much more. Thankful that you care for us and love us beyond measure. That you have endless patience with us. That you teach us time and time again what it is to be committed to you and your way. Thankful that you reveal yourself to us in myriad ways to inspire us and evoke within us a heartfelt response. Thankful that while all this is for everyone who will come to you and accept you, it is for me, and may I know it deep within. With overflowing hearts, hear our prayer. Amen. Our reading this morning comes from Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 to 35, and Chris will read this for us now. Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times. Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him, and as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii and seizing him by the throat he said pay what you owe then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him have patience with me and i will pay you but he refused then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt when his fellow slaves saw what had happened they were greatly distressed and they went and reported it to their lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that you debt, because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will do also to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. Amen. We're now going to take a short break for 30 seconds, um, during which time on screen, as always, will be a way in which you can give to the church to keep things like this running, to keep the church open. So please give if you can, but don't feel that you have to. Thank you. C.S. Lewis once wrote, Everyone says forgiveness is a lovely idea until there is something to forgive. This is true. So often when we do wrong, we want to be forgiven as soon as possible. However, when others do wrong to us, we are not so quick to forgive. In this passage from Matthew, Jesus explains why we should forgive. Just like the king forgave the unforgiving servant, Jesus Christ the king has forgiven us, so we should forgive others. C.S. Lewis also sums this up by saying, To be a Christian means to forgive the inexcusable, because God has forgiven the inexcusable in you. 
when we realize just what Jesus did in order that we would receive God's grace and forgiveness, it should help us to forgive others as we know the freedom that comes from being forgiven. However, this can be hard, especially if we feel that God hasn't forgiven us for something that we have done previously. We need to trust that God has forgiven us and feel the freedom of God's grace. Corrie Ten Boom had these words to say regarding accepting forgiveness. It was 1947. I had come from Holland to defeated Germany with the message that God forgives. It was the truth they needed most to hear in that bitter, bombed out land. And I gave them my favorite mental picture. Maybe because the sea is never far from a Hollander's mind. I like to think that's where forgiven sins are thrown. When we confess our sins, I said, God cast them into the deepest ocean, gone forever. Then God places a sign out there that says, no fishing allowed. We cannot expect others to forgive us if we can't forgive them. A man came to John Wesley and said, I could never forgive that person. And John Wesley replied, I hope you never sin. When you are unforgiving, you are burning the very bridge you need to walk across. Forgiveness is an ongoing process. Peter asked Jesus how many times he should forgive, and he said 70 times 7. We are to keep forgiving until we forget what has been done to us. Because the unforgiving servant did not forgive, he ended up being tortured in prison. If we don't forgive someone, then we can end up resenting a person, which emotionally can end up feeling a bit like being caught in a metaphorical prison of negative emotion. Also, if we don't forgive someone, a relationship may be damaged forever. There is a Spanish story of a father and son who had become estranged. The son ran away and the father set off to find him. He searched for months but could not find him. Finally, in a last ditch attempt, the father put an ad in the Madrid newspaper. The ad read, Dear Paolo, meet me at the fountain at noon on Saturday. All is forgiven. I love you, your father. On Saturday, 800 Paolo showed up. Forgiving someone also means that instead of focusing on who has upset us, we can focus on God's plan for us. The Forgiveness Project, founded in 2004, collects and shares stories from both victims and perpetrators of crime and conflict who have rebuilt their lives following hurt and trauma in order to help people examine 28-year-old paramedic James Hodgkinson was killed in 2011 from a single punch to his head. He had been out in Nottingham with his father, brother and three friends after watching a cricket match. His attacker, Jacob Dunn, pleaded guilty and served 13 months in prison for manslaughter. Later, James's mother, Joan met Jacob through a restorative justice group called Remedy. She could see that he was deeply remorseful and that gave her hope he could change. 
they are now working together, talking publicly about restorative justice and raising awareness of the catastrophic effects of a single punch. Joan said, forgiveness for me means being at peace and letting go of the bitterness. Let us pray. Compassionate, rescuing, forgiving God. Never let us take for granted your loving, saving activity. Never let us take for granted the fact that despite all the evil we do, you still care for us, still reach out to forgive and restore us. So deal with us, we pray, that we may have short memories for any wrongs done to us and long memories for the sins you have forgiven. Amen. As we reflect on what we have heard, the song The Passion by Hillsong will be played.
And now our prayers of intercession. Jesus' parables inspire us to pray for those who forgive us, for big things and small, for those who do not forgive, no matter what, for those who do not know how to forgive, For those who do not want to forgive. For those who have not been forgiven. God of forgiveness, for them all, we pray. Amen. We will close our worship with our final song, Your Love is Alive by House Fires.
dog yet. Go in the steadfast love of the Lord. Keep Christ in your heart always. Bless the Lord and do his will. Amen. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are the cold.